you all and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am bringing you guys my first vlog for travel and I'm excited to share this video with you guys and it is going to be jam-packed with a lot of information. I am a chef here and that's what I post most of my content about but my page is going to be dedicated to lifestyle and travel as well. A part of being a foodie is being inspired by the world and going and experiencing the world and all of its culinary adventures throughout that. So I travel for food, <laughs> but I also just travel for fun. It's a lifestyle that I have and love. And I am bringing you guys information about my recent travels to Baja, California. Um, and this video is going to be more informative, but also taking you on a journey with me. I drive over from California to Mexico across the border. A lot of people have questions about that and I am here to answer everything for you guys and give you guys as much information as I can and my experiences and so forth. So let's get started. I go to Mexico by car and drive over several times a year, usually going to Rosarito, Ensenada and mainly Valle de Guadalupe. So Valle de Guadalupe is a part of Baja California where it is the wine country of Mexico. It is a sort of like a dirt valley, which sounds crazy, but keep with me. Um, and it's like a camping experience, but they call it glamping. So glamping is a luxurious sort of camping experience. So it's an off the beaten path, really romantic getaway, or just a relaxed station getaway wineries, the best food in Mexico. A lot of people are really discovering Valle de Guadalupe and it's a gem, okay? So you'll see in the video going forward where I blog my entire trip and I hope you guys watch it all the way to the end and enjoy the, the moment. But let's get into the things you need to know now um, when you're traveling and driving over. So number one, you are driving from the United States to Mexico. Mexico is another country. When you drive over, you're not checked for your identification or anything unless you get randomly checked to do so. You coming back through the border, you are checked for your passport. A passport is required when you're traveling by land or air or anywhere across to another country. So make sure you have your passport because I don't know what happens if you don't have your passport when you're trying to cross over from the border. I've never experienced it. I don't want to experience it. I don't know what happens. So that's number one. Okay, so number two. Number two is when driving across the border in your vehicle, your insurance that you have here in the United States only transfers into the next country up to 50 miles. You are gonna go past the 50 miles, so you do need to get an insurance for the country of Mexico. And so I usually um, call a specific insurance company. I'll put it in the caption, but basically um, my state farm insurance, I called them, they referred me to a provider that they trust and anyone could use them. You don't have to be a state farm insurance. Sure, I guess that's how you say it, um, but it's not that expensive um, for like a 48 hour trip. I usually only pay about 44 bucks um, that varies on your vehicle, the value of your car, so forth and so on. So I'll give you the information below on the insurance provider I use when crossing over. I've, I've never had an incident where I have had to use it, but they are available for you. Okay, so number three, use Google Maps and stay on the road. The biggest question, the biggest comment that I get about driving over into Mexico is driving in Tijuana. So let's unwrap that. First of all, Tijuana is a, you know, poverty stricken city where there's poverty, there's crime. That's in any place in the entire world, not just in TJ. And you also have to think of the narrative that is created for even the poverty stricken areas of the United States. So I'll say that. But the main thing to know is when you're driving over into Mexico, you're not driving in Tijuana per se. You're driving on the highway through Tijuana and you're only driving for a few minutes. Use Google Maps. Google Maps does work in Mexico. It will take you to your destination. You're in Rosarito within 10 to 15 minutes post you passing the border. It's fine. You're going to see panhandlers everywhere like you would 
in lower property stricken areas in the United States. Okay, so that's that. I've never had any trouble there. I've never had any issues. And it's, it is what it is. Your normal ghetto, anywhere you would see. Okay, so now we're gonna move to number four. Number four is how do I book my stays? My stays are in Valle de Guadalupe again most of the time. I have stayed in Rosarito and I have stayed in Sonata as well. And I book those usually through Airbnb. So Airbnb is, you know, they back screen people and so forth and so on. Um, for the glamping locations in Mexico, they use Airbnb for all of them. Um, and they also have some independent bookings directly through them once you get to know the locations. But um, you do use Airbnb. They do have carbon monoxide detectors. In most of the units, it will list that as the information of the Airbnb that you're booking. I know that's been a thing lately where people have passed away because of carbon monoxide poisoning. Again, I book directly through Airbnb. It lists that item of, as one of the features of the property and you can also always ask ahead or bring your own. So that's one thing to note. And um, yeah, the expenses of the Airbnbs are very, very affordable. I'll list the Airbnbs that I've stayed at in the caption below, but it's a very inexpensive trip. Um, on average, you can probably find something between or less than hundred bucks a day. Or on the luxury side, um, depending on your budget, you can go up to 150 a day, even up to two, 300, but it's very affordable on a quick getaway weekend of an out of country trip for a very inexpensive cost. Okay, so that leads me into, I believe I'm number five now. So number five, we're talking about money. Um, money is pesos in Mexico. They use pesos instead of US dollar, but US dollar is pretty much accepted everywhere. Um, US dollar is a stronger dollar, um, or stronger currency, I should say. And the uh, it's accepted pretty much everywhere. So you don't have to convert money to go over to the border. Um, you can use US cash and they will quote you in pesos. So I recommend you downloading a currency exchange app where you're able to convert the money on the spot if you're out buying something or paying for something and they give you your bill in pesos, so you know what it is. They also accept major credit cards, debit cards as well. So you can always pay that way also. I would check with your debit bank or uh, financial institution on their currency exchange rates because some have rates with some major credit cards that are like travel reward cards they usually don't have an exchange rate um, so they'll let you charge and convert it for you automatically so that's the currency of going into Mexico okay so we're gonna get into the sixth thing to discuss here when going over um, so when going over to Ensenada Rosarito it's pretty city wise right um, coastal beaches, things like that. But going over to Valle, Valle is a lot of dirt road, dirt, bumpy road. You're literally almost like off-roading. I do take my car, which is a mid-sized vehicle, um, but you will be driving on dirt roads. It is not uncommon. It is very common and that is the experience there. So don't take a fancy car. I wouldn't take a fancy car anyway, just to not be so flashy in Mexico. Um, but don't take a fancy car. Um, you don't need a truck per se, but a reliable vehicle because you don't want to break down out of the country. You'll have to figure out how to navigate that in another country and that could be a, a whole nother situation. Um, but you want to have uh, a vehicle that's reliable and a vehicle that you're okay with getting a little dirty and just driving a little bit on bumpy dirt roads because that is the authenticity of the Valle. And it's not a deterrent for me, but it is just something to be aware of. And to number seven now. <laughs> okay, so this is driving back home through the border line. So the border coming through is easy breezy. It literally takes a few minutes. Again, unless you get searched and randomly stop, which they can ask um, you to pull over for random searches. Um, but going home through the border. So through the border line, you will sometimes get lucky. I guess it's gonna depend on what time you leave. Just like rush hour traffic, there's rush hour traffic at the border. You have to stop because every vehicle has to have their passport checked for every passenger in the car, that is including children. You have to have passports for everyone. Um, it is much longer. So going during non-peak hours, 
extremely extremely early in the mornings like five six seven you will not wait as long going post checkout time hotel you know check out 11 everybody's rushing to get to the border to get back through you're going to be in line for possibly a few hours um and you don't have a restroom so be prepared to use a restroom stop at a local restaurant before you get out of rosarito is what i usually do um i usually stop at a coffee shop or something to use the restroom before we get into the border line uh you will be in the line and the line can be long again you're going to see a lot of vendors or street vendors trying to sell you gadgets and things and such as that so you will be hassled by a lot of street vendors that are literally in the lines of the borders trying to sell you everything known to man if you just ignore them you'll be fine if you entertain one then all are going to be rushing to have you try to buy what they're selling that's food trinkets gadgets whatever they can try to sell you they will try to sell you so beware of people at the border in the lines trying to sell you stuff. Again, most importantly, try to use the restroom before you get to the border. And that's like in Rosarito somewhere, coffee shop, whatnot. And um, make sure that you are prepared for that. And again, try to go during non-peak hours. Early, early, early morning, really, 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 really late at night. But midday, you're going to have a wait. You can also Google like border weight and there's kind of different apps and stuff that will tell you what the current time is at the border weight. You can also use what's called global entry or sentry lane. So I travel there frequently. So I recently got global entry, which basically is a ready lane. So you'll see ready lane or sentry lane. Do not get into that line unless you have global entry or sentry. So that is registering like TSA pre-check if you're travel by flight or global entry where you have been approved to be able to travel through the land borders based on your background screening and getting approved for that. And so I'll link that information below in the comments about global entry and century lane. But you go through background screenings, you pay for basically being able to get an expedited um, border crossing through land travel and like global entry works for global international travel by air as well. So. Don't get into that lane, get into the regular border lane. Yes, the line will be long. Global entry line and century ready lines, those lines are going to be much faster. It will only take half or third or quarter of the time versus the regular lines because you've already had security clearance to be able to go through faster. And there are several border crossings. There's like Otay Mesa and there is uh, San Ysidro. Usually San Ysidro is the main one you'll cross. Old Time Mesa is also not that far. So um, there's a few border crossings. You can use whichever one you'd like based on where you are coming from. And again, just be very patient. So the most important part and the last part I'll go over with you for now, unless there's questions and I end up doing a second video or whatnot, or my next video when I travel there again, but is the food, where to go, what to do in Mexico, we travel and have experienced many different spaces and our biggest source of finding information is Google and TripAdvisor. Yelp is a big resource here in the United States, but there's not a lot of Yelp used in Mexico as it's used here. Yes, there's some, you can use Yelp, but it's gonna be very low reviews as far as the amount of reviews they receive because people don't really use it often there. So TripAdvisor and Google, are your best resources. So literally just type in what to do in Valle de Guadalupe or what to do in Rosarito, Ensenada, so forth and so on. And you'll find uh, your options and even hashtags of different things on social media. You know, TikTok and Instagram are very big and YouTube actually are very big social medias where people share their experiences. And word of mouth has always been the best form of your recommendations and, and how you experience the world through what other people do. That is a video I'm doing now to share my experience and hope to help you guys if you are considering to travel across the border. So yeah, that is it. Tra TripAdvisor, Google, social medias, those are your resources that you can use for finding things to do. Okay, so now I'm going to get into my travels there, where I go, uh, some of my favorite spots that I, I always touch down when I'm there and going to Mexico, and my blog that's 
starting now and I would appreciate you guys liking, commenting, ask me any questions below and I will go through my blog now and I will give the expenses of the places we've stayed. I will go over the amount of money I've spent at each place as well, my reviews and so forth. And if again, there's any questions or anything, be sure to ask me in the comments below. Thank you. And let's take a look at my experience. Okay, so this is the freeware where it ends and says Mexico only. You get here and this is what the border crossing looks like. You're literally just driving through here and go through the little border crossing here. That's it. And this is the main road you get onto once you are past the border. And literally that's driving through TJ. That's what it looks like. You're literally on a highway and it's only for a few minutes. And now you're in Rosarito. So this is something to note. This is a toll booth. You will have multiple toll booths when you travel through Mexico. So you probably get to about three of them going into Valle or Ensenada. They cost about $2.10. So make sure you have petty change cash on you. Otherwise, uh, you're going to get a lot of pesos back if you don't have any short, you know, short bills. The scenic drive over is beautiful. And the first stop I always go to is Puerto Nuevo to Villa Ortega's where I get the most amazing lobster you can ever find in the world. So Baja California, Puerto Nuevo, which is in Rosarito, is known for its lobster. And these are gigantic. And they were $100 for the extremely large one and $65 for the other one. So we went with the one that was $65, which was larger than my hand. It's incredible. They serve you this complimentary tortilla soup and it's incredible do not pass that up and always get you a great margarita enjoy the festive music of the live bands they have playing there and the coconut shrimp is also one of our absolute favorites so don't skip that so when you get your lobster um, definitely enjoy that with your rice your beans and your huge tortillas um, just a side note, I like to season my butter. They serve hot butter. Add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of lime juice, get that seasoned up and with the hot sauce as well if you'd like. And that's how I serve mine and it is absolutely amazing. But again, let's get into these huge tortillas. They are like gigantic. But anyway, going from there, we always pass what's called Mission Beach. This is where you can do horseback riding. It's very low shores as well. If you have kids, go there. You can trust the water levels. It's amazing. And horseback riding is maybe like 10, 20 bucks. You can negotiate. And then I always stop here. You can always find these vendors here with the most amazing array of Mexican candies, fruits. They will try to sell you here clearly. Um, but it is absolutely everything you can need and ask for. But I really go here for the views and I'll show you that shortly. And this place is called Miador Salas Puedos. And I hope I pronounced that correct, but you'll see it. I, I'll show the location here. But it's a beautiful lookout, scenic location, just literally one minute off the road. You can hop right back on the highway, but it is worth a stop. Get some photos in, enjoy the moment, the vibe, and you know, just chill out there for a moment. It has a few different scenic views from there. So then we keep driving and then we get to Valle de Guadalupe. So this is what the dirt road looks like. So we're going into the Las Lomas community here. This is your terrain. That's your street signs you saw to the right. This is what it looks like. You're literally driving dirt roads and it's a lot of construction going on. So you always see construction trucks because it's a very big developed uh, location. It's becoming very popular. So travel before it gets too much. But this is where we stayed at, which is Otero Hotel. And this is a glamping hotel very boutique-ish very intimate um, I did book this through Airbnb 
It was only $108 per night plus a little bit of taxes and fees. And it's a brand new facility. If you can tell, it's super modern, very desert landscape, but very beautiful and has amazing views all over the Valle. Fresh lavender plants and cactuses and rosemary, which sings to my heart being in the culinary industry. I love smelling those fresh herbs everywhere. It's beautifully designed um, for it to be, again, a glamping experience. So yeah, so just walking up the stairs to our, I guess I would call it a bungalow. And we do have uh, the bungalow feel, but it is still like a camping experience so it's going to be just enough of what you need not super extra large like a normal hotel room so here's our room pretty small petite again you're encouraged to kind of experience the lifestyle there so it's your shower your bed your toilet everything that you would need it's air conditioned and heater and um, i did check it has the uh, carbon monoxide detector gives you a few chairs. It's really no TVs here at any of the locations because it is like a glamping experience and they don't want you to be sitting up in the room. Go out and experience the Valle. So then we go to Deckman's. This is our first dinner the night we get there and it is very catered to by Americans and they want you to have a luxury experience. So you check in at the gate, you drive up and see all past the vineyards. It's vineyards everywhere. And it's hidden in the back of this, the vineyards. And it's not visible from the road. And it's just a perfect little hideaway restaurant. They do everything outdoor grill. At every restaurant, you will get a complimentary dish like this here. This was a, a salmon croquette and a Mexican tomatillo salsa. And it was stunning and beautiful. We then had a medley of vegetables, mashed potato puree, salad, some quail, and steak. And they're known for their fire grill everything at this location. Uh, gave us some complimentary desserts at the end. We ended up paying $155 for this meal. Mind you, that's a luxury experience there. There's definitely a lot more places that are inexpensive, but I'm a foodie and I like luxury. But anyway, we move on to day two. We are headed to breakfast at the best breakfast in the world. Literally, that is actually a, a factual statement. So just to note, these are what the street signs look like. Some of the, raves, the roads are paved here, so you will have some locations where you see that. But anyway, La Cocina de Dona Estela. It's literally, people have traveled across the world to come here, and it is voted in 2021 the best breakfast restaurant in the world. The food here is just so unmatched. Yes, in the middle of this desert valle, this is a restaurant that has received rave reviews, and it's very authentic they do old school cooking in this brick oven where they actually cook their food um, and old school very ancient style of cooking and it's just to die for so you start with your chips and salsa and your cheese i forgot the name of this cheese but it is just the most addicting cheese you can ever eat and then I go to the traditional special combination, which is machaca and eggs and vegetables, the rice, I'm sorry, the beans, a lamb consomme and a lamb bidia. So lamb meat is really the actual authentic version of bidia, not beef like we do it a lot now. We had the elote hot pancakes and the lamb quesadilla with refried beans and a full lamb consomme with the meat. It is the best ever. All of that was a total of $43. And just to show you guys the authenticity of this space, they literally raise the cattle here and they cook it from literally farm to table. It's a full experience, but it's the freshest you can ever have. I feel sorry for the animals, but um, you know, that's the, the circle of life, right? <laughs> 
So then after breakfast, we stumbled upon this location I saw, and it's called La Cima. And this is another hotel that's in the area, not too far from where we were staying. So I'm like, hey, let's go over and look at it. It's a beautiful new um, modern development. And we decided to, hey, why not have a wine tasting after our breakfast? And we had an amazing guide here, um, which I'll tag in the comments below. That gave us a great history of Valle de Guadalupe. Um, about 90% of the wines from Mexico comes from here. So when you're in Valle, it is a wine country. There's wineries everywhere, over a hundred. So you have to enjoy wine. We ended up relaxing for a little bit during the day and we went to our second excursion, another winery, Bodega VMD, which is a, the newest winery here. It just opened about a month ago. It's on actually a private property that they've converted into a like intimate winery. The property was stunning. Uh, here's the one of the owners here walking us down the stairs of the property onto this amazing, beautiful manicured location and super intimate and nice vibe of a winery where they have a lake or I guess pond here that completely sets the mood for what you experience in Valle. And to note, the cost of wine tasting is only about $12 to $15 per person. This amazing charcuterie board was about $28. I did buy a bottle of wine from each location, which were about $30 to $40 per bottle of wine. We left there and went to dinner at Fauna. Now, Fauna is one of the top restaurants in Latin America here in Valle. It's ranked number 16 of top 50 Latin American restaurants. And it is a fine dining experience. It's literally the best restaurant in the region. It's a farm to table experience, fresh homemade tortillas everywhere you go. It's a shared table space and Okay, so this one is going to be a little expensive because, again, this is the top restaurant in the region. It's super fine dining. Uh, we did the tasting menu, which is very elegant. This may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for me, I love to experience street food all the way to uh, full, elegant, fine dining experiences. And this was a 12-course meal with a corn old fashion. I couldn't even begin to name everything we had here because, literally, it's just a tasting menu so whatever the chef serves they bring out but an array of seafoods and meats and quail and octopus and fish and just absolutely stunning mouth full of flavor experiences and so this one's a little bit more expensive again because this is the highest fine dining in this, the region so this was it was two hundred dollars with the tip again this is not for everybody but and there's so many other options that are less expensive, but just giving you an idea of what my trip looks like. So then again, this is just a weekend trip here. So that was our last night's dinner we had there. We ended up getting up in the morning, driving the, the uh, Mountain View Scenic Drive back home. But always before I leave, I always stop at Popola. It's a fishing village that's located in Rosarito and i come here to get fresh seafood so i always pack an ice chest it's literally like a flea market but fresh seafood that's literally just caught and brought on to the shore and it's being sold for you where they will actually cut down your fish your lobsters anything you name octopus and anything and it's really inexpensive you can bargain with them They'll scale the fish, cut your fillets, all that for you. And it's very inexpensive and the freshest you can find. And this is the location in Rosarito that I stopped at. This is my restroom break before crossing the border. Uh, cappuccinos where I get my morning coffee and an order of churros. Around the corner, we went to Tacos Iyaki, which is a huge known taco spot in uh, Rosarito. Got a few of their tacos i forgot the name of them but they fire roast their meat here which is a beautiful 
give you some fresh salsas and all the fixings. Grab that, get that to go, hop in the car and get to the borderline. But this was again, one of the actual um, really good spots to stop at before if you wanna get some food on the road to go. And this is what they look like. Fresh made flour tortillas and a beautiful seasoned meat, again with all the fixings. And of course we could have ate it there, but when you're in line at the border, you kind of just want to be able to have something to do. So we ate. So this is a line at the Otay Mesa crossing. So the left-hand side over here is the normal border crossing. We have global entry, so we can go through the ready lanes, the century, if you see it there to the top in blue. The century, ready lanes, that is the exited lanes if you have global entry or century. And that is all for you guys. Thanks for watching.